in an age where the mantra, time is money, is echoed from the bustling streets of cities to the cluttered inboxes of our digital lives, the relentless pursuit of efficiency has quietly morphed into a relentless pursuit of exhaustion. Did you know that the average person makes over 35,000 decisions daily? From the moment we wake up to the moment we close our eyes, we are bombarded with choices, notifications and deadlines, all vying for a slice of our ever-diminishing attention span. This relentless pace of modern life, while often celebrated as the hallmark of productivity and success, carries with it an unspoken toll, a surge in stress-related illnesses, a pandemic of mental health crises, and a creeping sense of disconnection from what truly matters. But what if the secret to a richer, more fulfilling life lies not in speeding up, but in embracing the courage to slow down? Today, we delve into an oasis of calm in the desert of our fast-paced existence, the concept of slow living. Far from encouraging idleness, slow living offers a radical yet simple antidote to the high-speed, high-stress lifestyle that has ensnared so many of us. It's a philosophy that dares to question the modern equation of speed with success, suggesting instead that richness comes from experience, not efficiency. At its core, slow living is about making a conscious choice. It's about deciding to step off the treadmill of life to walk beside it, savoring the scenery, engaging deeply with our surroundings, and fostering connections that nourish the soul. It's a movement that advocates for a life less hurried, not for the sake of doing less, but to live more, more deliberately, more fully, and more in tune with ourselves and the world around us. But is such a shift even possible in today's fast-paced world, or is it merely a luxury afforded to the few? Can the principles of slow living genuinely provide an answer to the malaise of modernity, or are they just another trend in the endless cycle of lifestyle fads? We're going to explore the psychology behind slow living, diving into its numerous benefits, from improved mental health and physical well-being to deeper, more meaningful relationships. We'll unpack the principles and practices that define slow living, offering both a philosophical perspective and actionable advice for integrating these practices into your daily life. By the end of our journey today, you'll have a deeper understanding of how adopting even small aspects of slow living can transform your relationship with time, productivity, and ultimately, with life itself. We'll challenge the prevailing narrative that faster is always better, and explore how slowing down can lead to a more enriching and satisfying life. So if you're feeling overwhelmed by the pace of your life, curious about the slow living movement, or simply seeking a more mindful way to navigate your days, stick around. This exploration might just offer the perspective shift you need to embrace a more balanced, joyful and fulfilling approach to life. In the swirl of our day-to-day -day existence, modern life seems to spin faster with each passing moment. This whirlwind is not just a feeling, but a reality that shapes our lifestyles, pushing us toward a horizon that seems perpetually out of reach. Imagine waking up to an alarm, jolting you out of sleep with a reminder that the race against time has begun. From the instant our feet touch the floor, we're on a treadmill set at an ever-increasing speed. This isn't just about physical motion, it's the relentless pursuit of productivity, efficiency and connectivity that defines the essence of contemporary life. Our lifestyles have morphed into a high-definition, fast-forward version of life that prioritizes speed above all else. We live in an era where technology has blurred the lines between work and home, where emails, notifications and digital tasks infiltrate every moment of our existence. The notion of being always on has become a badge of honor, rather than a warning sign, with the digital world offering us infinite streams of information and entertainment at the tap of a screen. This constant connectivity, 
while revolutionary in how we communicate and access information, also means our minds are perpetually engaged, never truly resting, always processing. But at what cost does this speed come? The impact of living life in the fast lane is far-reaching, affecting our physical and mental health in ways that are becoming impossible to ignore. Studies and findings from across the globe paint a concerning picture. The relentless pace of modern life is leading to elevated levels of stress, anxiety and burnout. It's as though the human body and mind, in their current evolutionary state, are not designed to handle the incessant demands placed upon them by a world that never sleeps. Stress, in particular, has become a ubiquitous companion for many. It's the body's natural response to challenges or demands, but in excessive amounts, it's anything but beneficial. Chronic stress can wreak havoc on our bodies, leading to high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes, obesity, and a weakened immune system. Mentally, the toll is equally heavy, with increased risk of depression, anxiety, and insomnia. The irony is palpable. In our quest to live fuller, more productive lives, we've inadvertently tipped the scales, compromising our health and well-being. The concept of burnout, once reserved for the high-strung professionals of high-stakes industries, has now become a common plight across various sectors of the workforce. Characterized by extreme exhaustion, feelings of detachment and a sense of ineffectiveness, burnout is the body and mind's cry for a halt, a desperate signal that the pace of life has exceeded our capacity to cope. And yet, amidst this dizzying pace, a counter-movement is emerging, one that champions the art of slowing down as a revolutionary act of self-care and rebellion against the societal norms that glorify speed. This movement, known as slow living, is not a call to abandon ambition or technology, but rather an invitation to reassess our relationship with time and productivity. It asks us to ponder a critical question. In our relentless pursuit of efficiency, what are we truly gaining and at what cost? As we delve deeper into the principles of slow living, we uncover a pathway not just to a more sustainable lifestyle but to a more meaningful, fulfilling existence. It's a journey that requires us to confront the very foundations upon which we've built our lives, to question the metrics by which we measure success, and to dare to imagine a life where time is not an enemy, but a friend. This exploration is not just about slowing down for the sake of it, it's about discovering a rhythm of life that resonates with the core of our being, offering us a chance to live deeply rather than merely exist on the surface. The philosophy of slow living is not a new invention. Rather, it's a return to principles that have guided human societies for centuries. This approach to life, which emphasizes balance, harmony, and alignment with nature's rhythms, draws heavily from ancient wisdom. Cultures across the world, from the East with its Zen Buddhism, Taoism, and the teachings of Confucius, to the Western philosophies of Stoicism and Epicureanism, have long preached the virtues of living in harmony with the natural world, practicing mindfulness, and finding satisfaction in the simple pleasures of life. These ancient teachings underscore the importance of a life well lived over one that is merely busy. They tell us that true fulfillment arises not from the accumulation of material wealth or the relentless pursuit of success, but from a deep engagement with the world around us, a celebration of the present moment, and an appreciation for the simple joys that life offers. Central to the philosophy of slow living are several core principles that challenge the frenetic pace of modern life, encouraging us instead to embrace a more measured, thoughtful approach to our days. Let's delve deeper into these guiding tenets. Mindfulness At the heart of slow living lies the principle of mindfulness. 
which is essentially about living in the moment and paying acute attention to the here and now. Mindfulness teaches us to be fully present in our experiences, to engage deeply with the current moment without distraction from past regrets or future anxieties. This can be as simple as savoring the flavor of a meal, truly listening to a friend without formulating your next response, or noticing the play of sunlight through the leaves during a quiet walk. Mindfulness, cultivated through practices such as meditation, deep breathing, and mindful observation, allows us to slow down the pace of our minds even when the world around us continues to rush by. It's about finding stillness within, a quiet center from which we can experience life more fully. Simplicity Another cornerstone of slow living is simplicity, which involves reducing clutter, not just physical clutter in our homes, but also the noise and distractions that fill our minds and lives. It's about identifying what's truly important and letting go of the rest. This principle is not about deprivation but about discernment, recognizing that more stuff, more commitments, and more stimuli do not necessarily lead to more happiness. On the contrary, simplicity can lead to a richer, more vibrant life by clearing space for what really matters. In practice, simplicity might mean decluttering our living spaces, limiting our engagements to those that truly add value to our lives, or reducing our consumption to focus on quality rather than quantity. Quality over quantity. This principle encourages us to value the quality of our experiences and possessions over sheer quantity. In a world where we're often urged to seek more, more goods, more experiences, more achievements, slow living invites us to find satisfaction in fewer, but richer, experiences. It's about choosing a handmade item that tells a story over a mass-produced one. Preferring a leisurely meal with loved ones over a hurried fast food bite. Or opting for one meaningful project at a time rather than multitasking between many. By focusing on quality, we engage more deeply with our choices, leading to greater fulfillment and appreciation for the craftsmanship, time and effort behind the things we choose to bring into our lives. Connection Finally, slow living emphasizes the importance of connection, deep, meaningful connections with people, with nature and with ourselves. It recognizes that relationships are not sustained through likes and comments on social media, but through time spent together in conversation, shared experiences and mutual support. Similarly, our connection to nature is rekindled not through screensavers and documentaries, but through direct, immersive experiences in the natural world. And our connection to ourselves is deepened not by constant busyness and distraction, but by quiet reflection, creative pursuits, and self-care. These connections are essential for a fulfilling life, providing us with a sense of belonging, peace, and joy. In embracing the principles of slow living, we're invited to step off the fast track and rediscover the rhythms that resonate with our deepest selves. It's a journey back to the basics, to the timeless truths that our ancestors understood well, that life's richest moments come not from the rush but from the pause, not from the quantity but from the quality, and not from noise but from silence. As we explore the philosophy of slow living further, we find it's not merely about slowing down for its own sake, but about making room for a more intentional, meaningful and joyful life. Embarking on a journey into the realm of slow living brings with it a plethora of benefits that touch every aspect of our lives. From the tranquility of our minds to the vitality of our bodies and the depth of our relationships, the rewards of embracing a slower pace are profound and far-reaching. Let's dive into these benefits to understand how they manifest in our lives. Improved mental health. In a world that often feels like it's spinning too fast, our minds can become whirlpools of stress, anxiety, and depression. The constant rush to meet deadlines, 
the incessant buzz of notifications, and the pressure to keep up can leave us feeling drained and disconnected from ourselves. However, slow living offers a sanctuary, a place of calm in the storm. By adopting principles of mindfulness and simplicity, we learn to navigate our days with a sense of peace and purpose rather than chaos and hurry. The practice of focusing on the present moment, a key component of slow living, helps to break the cycle of worry and rumination that often fuels anxiety and depression. Moreover, by simplifying our lives and reducing the clutter of obligations and distractions, we create space for mental rest and rejuvenation. This simplicity allows our minds to breathe, to process and to rest, reducing the overwhelm that can lead to burnout and mental fatigue. In embracing slow living, we're not just doing less. We're giving our minds the gift of space, leading to greater clarity, creativity and joy. Enhanced Physical Health The benefits of slow living extend beyond the mind to have a tangible impact on our physical health. The stress and fast pace of modern life don't just affect our mental well-being, they manifest in our bodies, contributing to a range of health issues. High blood pressure, heart disease, sleep disturbances and weakened immune systems can all be exacerbated by a life lived in the fast lane. Slow living with its emphasis on mindfulness, simplicity and connection offers a counterbalance to these pressures, promoting physical health and well-being. Engaging in slow mindful practices, spending time in nature and adopting a slower pace of eating can lead to lower blood pressure and reduced risk of heart disease. These practices encourage a state of relaxation and calm, allowing our bodies to shift from the stress-induced fight-or-flight mode to a restorative rest and digest state. This shift can improve heart health, enhance immune function, and support overall physical well-being. Moreover, slow living encourages a more mindful approach to eating and physical activity, fostering a healthier relationship with food and our bodies. By taking the time to prepare and savor meals, we're more likely to make nutritious choices and enjoy the process of eating. Similarly, choosing physical activities that we genuinely enjoy, rather than those we feel we should do, can lead to a more sustainable and joyful approach to fitness. Deeper Relationships One of the most profound benefits of slow living is the way it transforms our relationships. In a fast-paced world, our interactions with others can become superficial and transactional, squeezed into the margins of our busy schedules. Slow living invites us to shift from quantity to quality, investing time and presence into our relationships. This principle of slow living fosters deeper, more meaningful connections with the people in our lives. By prioritizing quality time with family and friends, Engaging in activities together without the distraction of screens or the pressure of time limits, we build stronger bonds and create lasting memories. Slow living encourages us to listen more deeply, communicate more openly, and show up more fully for the people we care about. These practices not only enrich our relationships, but also provide a sense of belonging and support that is essential for our mental and emotional well-being. Moreover, slow living extends to our relationship with the community and the natural world. It encourages us to engage with our local communities, whether through supporting local businesses, participating in community events, or volunteering. These connections strengthen our sense of place and contribute to a more cohesive, caring society. Similarly, by fostering a deeper connection with nature, slow living reminds us of our place in the larger web of life inspiring a sense of awe and gratitude that enriches our spirit. While the slow living movement offers a compelling blueprint for a more meaningful and balanced life, Embracing its principles in a society that often prizes speed, efficiency and constant connectivity 
presents its own set of challenges. Moreover, criticisms regarding the movement's practicality and accessibility highlight important conversations about privilege and the universal applicability of slow living ideals. Practicality The first hurdle many encounter when considering slow living is the perceived impracticality of adopting such a lifestyle in a fast-paced, productivity-driven society. For many people, the demands of work, family responsibilities and societal expectations create a whirlwind of activity from which slowing down seems not only impractical, but almost unthinkable. The modern economic model, with its focus on growth and efficiency, often leaves little room for the slower pace of life advocated by slow living proponents. Individuals may worry about falling behind in their careers, feeling judged for not keeping up, or simply finding it logistically challenging to carve out moments of slowness in a schedule brimming with obligations. Moreover, the digital age has brought about a culture of instant gratification and constant connectivity, making it difficult for many to disconnect, even briefly. The expectation to be always available, coupled with the fear of missing out, can make the idea of unplugging a source of anxiety rather than relief. In this context, the slow living movement's emphasis on disengagement from digital overload and prioritization of in-person interactions can seem like a lofty ideal rather than a practical reality. Criticism Criticism of the slow living movement often centers around issues of privilege and accessibility. Critics argue that the ability to choose a slower pace of life, to work less, to consume mindfully, or to engage in time-consuming practices like slow food, is a luxury not available to everyone. For individuals struggling to make ends meet, working multiple jobs, or living in environments that don't support a slower lifestyle, the ideals of slow living can seem out of reach, if not outright exclusionary. The critique extends to the movement's emphasis on simplicity and minimalism, which for some can imply a level of financial security and choice not afforded to everyone. The ability to declutter or to choose quality over quantity presupposes a baseline of material comfort that allows for such decisions. As such, critics of slow living argue that the movement risks being out of touch with the realities of many people's lives offering solutions that may work well for the privileged few, but fail to address the systemic issues that drive the relentless pace of modern life for the majority. Furthermore, the slow living movement's focus on connecting with nature, engaging in leisurely hobbies, and cultivating in-person relationships assumes access to green spaces, free time, and a supportive community. For individuals living in urban environments, under financial strain, or dealing with social isolation, these aspects of slow living may not only be challenging, but can also highlight inequalities and disparities in access to a fulfilling lifestyle. Despite these challenges and criticisms, the slow living movement continues to inspire those seeking an alternative to the fast-paced demands of modern life. It calls for a broader conversation about how we can collectively create a society that values well-being, sustainability, and connectedness over speed and productivity. Addressing the criticisms head-on, proponents of slow living are increasingly looking for ways to make the principles of the movement more inclusive and accessible, recognizing that a truly fulfilling life should not be a privilege, but a possibility for all. By engaging with these critiques, the slow living movement evolves, becoming not just a personal lifestyle choice, but a catalyst for broader societal change. Embracing the slow living movement doesn't mean you have to overhaul your entire life overnight. It's about starting small making manageable changes that collectively contribute to a more mindful, balanced existence. This gradual approach helps ensure that the transition is sustainable and enjoyable, rather than feeling like another overwhelming task on your to-do list.
let's explore practical ways to weave slow living principles into your daily life, focusing on achievable steps that make a significant impact. The beauty of slow living is that even the smallest changes can lead to a profound shift in how we experience our days. One easy way to begin is by identifying moments in your routine that feel particularly rushed or stressful and consciously deciding to approach them differently. For instance, if mornings are a frantic race against the clock, try waking up just 15 minutes earlier to enjoy a quiet cup of tea or coffee before the day begins. This small adjustment can set a more peaceful tone for the entire day. Another approach is to single out one activity each day to perform slowly and with full attention. This could be eating a meal without the distraction of screens, taking a leisurely walk, or simply sitting quietly for a few minutes to breathe and reflect. The key is to be fully present during this time, allowing yourself to fully engage with the activity and the sensations it brings. These moments of slowness serve as daily reminders of the value of pacing ourselves and savoring life's simple pleasures. Mindfulness practices are at the heart of slow living, helping us to stay anchored in the present moment and reducing the pace of our internal dialogue. A great starting point for cultivating mindfulness is through regular meditation. Meditation doesn't have to be intimidating or time-consuming even a few minutes a day can make a difference. There are many free apps and online resources available to guide beginners through short, simple meditation sessions that can fit into even the busiest schedules. Another mindfulness practice is to conduct a daily mindfulness check-in at different points throughout the day. This involves pausing whatever you're doing to take a few deep breaths and notice your surroundings, your thoughts and your feelings without judgment. These check-ins can help break the cycle of constant mental chatter and bring a sense of calm to your day. Gratitude journaling is another effective mindfulness practice. Each night, write down three things you're grateful for. This practice shifts your focus to the positive aspects of your life and can significantly enhance your sense of well-being and contentment. Digital Detox In our hyper-connected world, technology plays a significant role in accelerating the pace of life. While digital devices offer incredible benefits, their constant presence can also contribute to stress, distraction and a feeling of being perpetually on. Implementing a digital detox, even in small doses, can help mitigate these effects and foster a slower, more intentional lifestyle. One simple strategy is to designate certain times of the day as screen-free moments. Meal times, for example, offer a perfect opportunity to disconnect from devices and connect with others or simply enjoy your food. Another approach is to establish screen-free zones in your home, such as the bedroom, to encourage better sleep and more tranquil spaces. A more structured approach to reducing digital consumption is to schedule regular digital detox days or periods. This could be one day a week, a weekend each month, or an hour each day where you commit to turning off your digital devices and engaging in non-digital activities that you enjoy. During these times, you might explore hobbies, spend time outdoors, read, or simply relax and do nothing. The idea is to give your mind a break from the constant influx of information and stimuli that digital devices provide, allowing you to reconnect with yourself and the world around you in a more meaningful way. By starting small, engaging in mindfulness practices, and thoughtfully managing our use of technology, we can gradually incorporate slow living principles into our daily lives. These practices help us to reclaim our time, focus our attention on what truly matters, and live more fully and joyfully. Slow living isn't about rejecting the modern world, but about finding ways to navigate it more mindfully and intentionally, creating space for peace, connection, and well-being
The philosophy of slow living, while not explicitly formulated in the writings of ancient philosophers or even early psychologists, resonates deeply with many of their teachings and perspectives. Let's explore how the thoughts of renowned philosophers and psychologists align with the principles of slow living, each accompanied by a relevant quote that encapsulates their viewpoint. Carl Jung, The Importance of Self-Reflection Who looks outside, dreams. Who looks inside, awakes. Carl Jung's work on the importance of self-reflection and the journey towards self-awareness offers a profound psychological foundation for the principles of slow living. Jung believed that by turning our gaze inward, we embark on a path of individuation, a process of self-discovery and integration that leads to psychological wholeness. This introspective journey is not unlike the slow living ethos, which encourages a mindful examination of our lives, choices, and the pace at which we move through the world. Jung's emphasis on the unconscious and the symbols that arise from it underscores the depth of understanding and insight we can gain from moments of quiet reflection and stillness. Slow living, with its encouragement to pause and reflect, mirrors Jung's belief in the transformative power of looking within to find balance, purpose, and a deeper connection to our authentic selves. In this way, the slow living movement can be seen as a contemporary application of Jung's ideas, inviting us to awaken to our true potential by slowing down and paying attention to the inner workings of our minds and hearts. Seneca, the value of time. It is not that we have a short time to live, but that we waste a lot of it. Life is long enough and a sufficiently generous amount has been given to us for their highest achievements, if it were all well invested. Seneca's reflections on time and the importance of living wisely resonate deeply with the slow living philosophy. The Stoic philosopher's assertion that the problem is not the brevity of life, but rather our misuse of it, challenges us to reconsider our relationship with time. Slow living responds to this challenge by advocating for a more intentional and considered approach to how we spend our days. By choosing to slow down, prioritize depth over speed, and cultivate mindfulness in our daily activities, we align with Seneca's wisdom. The slow living movement encourages us to invest our time in what truly matters, to savor life's experiences, and to live in accordance with our values. Seneca's perspective reminds us that the richness of life is not diminished by its length, but by our failure to live it fully and consciously. Slow living, then, can be seen as a practical application of Stoic principles, a way to ensure that our time is well spent and our lives well lived. Henry David Thoreau, Simplifying Life I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately, to front only the essential facts of life and see if I could not learn what it had to teach and not, when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. Henry David Thoreau's experiment in simple living at Walden Pond is a seminal example of the principles that underpin slow living. Thoreau sought to strip away the non-essentials, to live in harmony with nature, and to discover the essence of a life well lived. His deliberate choice to embrace simplicity and mindfulness in the pursuit of deeper understanding and connection with the natural world mirrors the slow living ethos. Thoreau's advocacy for simplicity, self-reliance and mindfulness offers valuable lessons for those drawn to slow living. By reducing the clutter, both physical and mental, that occupies our lives, we can focus more fully on the present moment and on the aspects of life that truly enrich us. Thoreau's journey challenges us to question the societal norms that equate success with accumulation and busyness with importance. In embracing the lessons of Walden, the slow living movement calls us back to the basics, to a life that prioritizes depth, connection, and personal fulfillment over speed and superficiality. These perspectives highlight a common thread through the ages the search for a meaningful, balanced, and reflective life. 
While the term slow living might not have been used, the essence of this philosophy permeates the teachings of many great thinkers, suggesting that the yearning for depth, connection and mindfulness in life is a timeless pursuit. Before we wrap up this video, let's take a moment to reflect on the journey we've undertaken together, delving into the serene waters of slow living. We began by painting a picture of the modern lifestyle marked by its relentless pace, constant connectivity, and the toll it takes on our mental and physical health. The cacophony of our daily existence, with its myriad demands and distractions, has led many of us to yearn for a different way of being one that is more intentional, balanced, and fulfilling. Into this fray stepped the philosophy of slow living, a gentle yet powerful countercurrent to the speed and noise of contemporary life. We explored its historical and philosophical roots, finding resonance with the teachings of great thinkers like Carl Jung, who invited us to look inward for awakening, Seneca, who reminded us of the true value of time, and Henry David Thoreau who sought simplicity and deliberate living as the essence of existence. These perspectives, though centuries apart, converge on the profound realization that the quality of our lives is not determined by the speed at which we move through them, but by the depth of our engagement with the present moment. The benefits of embracing slow living are as varied as they are significant. From improved mental health fostering a calm and resilient mind, to enhance physical well-being and the deepening of our relationships, the rewards of decelerating our lives are both profound and pervasive. Yet as we acknowledge, this path is not without its challenges and criticisms, particularly in a society that equates busyness with importance and productivity with worth. Despite these hurdles, the essence of slow living is not about retreating from the world, but about engaging with it more meaningfully. It's about making conscious choices that align with our deepest values and desires, rather than being swept along by the currents of societal expectation and digital overload. As we conclude, I invite you to pause and consider your own life. Where might you benefit from slowing down? What small, manageable changes can you make to introduce more moments of stillness, reflection, and connection into your days? The journey to slow living doesn't require grand gestures or radical life overhauls. It begins with a single step, a moment of pause, a deep breath. Let this exploration be a catalyst for your own exploration into slow living. Embrace the power of pause, the richness of reflection, and the beauty of connection that lies at the heart of this philosophy. As you venture forth, carry with you the wisdom of those who have walked this path before, the knowledge that slowing down is not about doing less, but about living more, more deeply, more fully, more truly. In the words of Mary Oliver, to pay attention, this is our endless and proper work. Let slow living be your invitation to pay attention to the life that unfolds around you and within you, every moment of every day. It's the path to a more vibrant, joyous and meaningful existence. So take that step, embrace the slow and awaken to the wonder of your own life.